Well, that's not a bad one. I'll check my, uh, I better check my uh, notes here and see if there's some thoughts that I had to ramble about, possibly, before I get going on the next video, the next story. All right, so listen to this. Actually, I guess I got to, I think, I kind of remember. I've been reading so much lately. Did I tell you guys, uh, I got to make mention that I, I can't, I don't, I don't, I don't delete comments. And uh, I rarely, re I, I can't remember the last time I actually had to block somebody from the channel. It's weeks now. Because I get a lot of people saying uh, their comments are getting deleted. And that's kind of weird. I guess YouTube's, whatever YouTube's app, whatever they're doing, they're doing it. And uh, the really weird thing too is a lot of people email me telling me that they keep getting unsubscribed. And why do I keep unsubscribing them? I mean, you can check out YouTube on your phone app. There's nowhere there that uh, any one of us can can unsubscribe somebody. So I don't know what's going on, on YouTube, but I do know one thing that uh, yeah I try to bite my lip sometimes. But all the major all the major media platforms, it's so freaking blatant obvious that they don't want any use thinking for yourselves. They want to control what you're allowed to hear, and they. Are seriously trying to attempt to to steer everybody in a certain direction, and it's really alarming. And it's uh, it's as far as I'm concerned, it's enough to go to war over, right? That's what our relatives died for in World War II. Prove me I'm wrong. Anyway, before I start going on that tangent, and all I'm saying is I'm not taking comments off. I'm not unsubscribing people. Okay, it's it's YouTube, and I don't know why they do that. I haven't a clue, but. Just keep keep searching out if you want to follow all this. Keep searching. It'll still be up. And if it does go away one day, I'll be back. You'll be able to find me. What do we got? Hi, Steve. I'm a Norwegian woman. And from your name, I think you're a Viking too. I mailed you over a year ago, but all the emails you get, I think you got lost. It probably did. There is thousands. There's literally thousands of emails that I haven't read, you guys, okay? It's... It's very frustrating. And don't take, uh, not you, uh, ma'am, but for a lot of you people out there who are frustrated having had your email read, please take note. There are thousands and thousands of emails in all those email addresses. I think there's like, I got five or six email addresses, and most of you sleuth detectives out there have found them and cluttered them up with emails. It's, it's amazing. Like, I'll wake up the odd morning, and I'll crack open the emails, and I'll do what I can for an hour, and then i got to start my day. And, uh, yeah, it's very, very tough. But don't let that stop you from mailing them in. All right? Because we were just having a meeting last night with some, to get some help on this department, on that department, okay? Um, I made it here we go. Okay, yeah, see, I'm Norwegian. Uh, I think most of my relatives came from Stavanger and Oslo, majority of Stavanger. Been there. This is a short one, but a year ago you mentioned the alien connection that Scott and Stephen has mentioned. I'm not sure who Steven is, unless you might have got that mixed up with Dave, maybe. The one that only is seen by its outline, it moves very fast. Ah, yeah. What they refer to as cloaking, or like the predator description. Like that woman that was bull hunting in a tree stand, a videotape something in the trees doing that. Well, I was raspberry picking right behind her city. I have to explain. The capital of Norway is a small city. It has very clear boundaries to the forest. It's not allowed to develop outside... So, ergo, the capital is small and very expensive to live in. Been there, too. Once all the Viking ships there, too. I remember that. Took a train there from uh, Stavanger to Oslo. However, it is also the greenest and most wild around the city hub. Only 10, 15 minutes and you're out in the forest. And with a whole bunch of wildlife emojis. This, make it ver this makes it very easy for all of us to forage and camp and have a free use of all of what nature have to offer for all of us. We do have the freedom to roam. It means we can camp anywhere, everywhere, but not in someone's garden. But that day I was right out there, no more than half a mile out picking wild raspberries. There was this weird silence. I thought that I'd lost my hearing, but it was more like landing in an aeroplane right before your ears popped. 
the strange silence. I stood and experienced this for a minute or maybe 30 seconds or more, I don't know. But in that time, something slithered down a tree not far away. Looked like a bubble slash blob, maybe a foot wide, a half a meter, 14 feet away. Everything was so silent. When it touched the ground, it just disappeared and all was normal again. Like I said, almost like being in an airplane where your ears get clogged while landing. Well, this blob thing slithered down to the ground and then it was not there anymore. My hearing came back. I could hear the background noises like machineries, dogs, and annoying villa owners yelling at their kids. I know you don't like pics, but this is a strange one that I will attach. I really don't like to fly for too long, so I travel by Google Earth. Well, this traveling hasn't been a big thing in the last year, but anyway, check this peeker out. When the Google Earth car goes by, the pic is from Google Earth Canada. Lat and long at the bottom. Use my name, Layla Elkja Johansson. And give a huge credit to all the brave Norse that has come forward on your channel. P.S. Zoom in on the pic. It's scary. All right. Well, I got the picture here and I'll share it with everybody. And you know what? Again, um, are you pointing at it there? Oh, yeah, that's something different for sure. I can see that on my phone. Wow. Yeah, that's... Um, that's definitely not anything that you really want to see in the bushes in front of you while you're picking raspberries alone, is it? Now, I'm getting closer to wrapping my head around exactly what is happening when the dead silence kicks in. I have, I have some theories myself. A lot of emails have been coming in to be pinned... Uh, affirming some of the ideas I've come up with. I have a feeling if I, once I get together with Dave Plass again and some others, um, I think we can smash our brains together and possibly get something delivered to everybody that makes sense of, of those particular incidents where everything goes dead silent, nature sounds go silent, and uh, that alarming feeling happens. That's something that needs to be brought out and spoken about loudly on a large scale, as far as I'm concerned. In fact, and actually, I know it has to be. It's very, very important that the public is filled in with this knowledge. Very important. And it makes me angry that we haven't been informed in the past, right? But we're gonna, that's why we're here. We're gonna fix it. And uh, possibly save some lives, save some lives and lifetimes. All right, what do we got? There's more in here. Steve, send me these two pictures of the stone figure, as a stone head was mentioned in a recent experience. In this series of three, I was able to use my surf rise experience on the southern Oregon coast. Um, okay, well, those are definitely, without a doubt, those are Sasquatch tracks. I don't need anybody telling me any different. But uh, the stone head, I don't know the background story on that. So if somebody wants to comment below... And fill us in, or if you want to email back to details in that, that'd be great. As a stone head was mentioned in a recent experience. Hmm, doesn't ring a bell, man. But thank you for saying that in. And if somebody wants to send in some more history with that stone head, the story behind it, I'd be interested in hearing about it. Thanks again for emailing that, man. I appreciate it. Hi, Steve. Mark here. I love your channel. So here's another one. In August of 2017, on one of my frequent sunset bike rides on our local mountain, I was nearly out of the woods at the base of the hill when a low-flying helicopter grabbed my attention. I came to a stop in the trail with my, light, with my right foot on the ground and my left foot clipped in the pedal, ready to push. Where I stopped was an area where I had already had, already had several notable occurrences happen with these beings. There's a replica Miwok village there with several wiki-ups on a small level plot with a year-round water supply close by. This is where I've heard the whoops and had tree knocks and rocks thrown in my direction. So this helicopter flies directly overhead, low and slow, as if he's looking for something. I was looking straight up as he passed overhead. I was about 15 feet from the outer edge of a huge oak tree with these drooping branches that form some sort of natural shelter underneath. The limbs reach nearly to the ground, but they originate fairly high up on the trunk and they reach out 
far enough, you could easily fit a dozen people in there with room enough to stand. And, unless you looked really hard, you wouldn't see them. As soon as the helicopter passed out of sight, something in that oak tree shelter took a step. Dead branches and leaves crunched underfoot with enough force that I could feel it through my right foot as much as hear it. This thing was heavy. I didn't even turn my head. I just pushed down on my left foot and clipped into my right foot and got the hell out of there. I knew it wasn't a person, it was way too heavy. Also knew instinctively that it was trying to get it wasn't trying to get me because I would have been got. I think they just like to screw this sometimes. Anyway, thanks for your time, Steve. Okay, man. Thanks for sending that in, Mark, and uh, good move on pedaling your ass out of there. It's the right thing to do, okay? It's the right thing to do. These things don't want you to play a game of marbles with them. Most of them don't. Hello, Steve. My name is Lisa McKenna. I don't care if you use my name or not. I'm located now in St. Louis, Missouri. But up to a year ago, I lived my whole life in Washington State. I owned an acre of land just out of a small town called Tenino. My property bordered Joint Bait Base Fort Lewis McCord. We were totally surrounded by woods. I lived on that property for over 25 years of my life. I raised two beautiful, strong girls there by myself. None of us had fear of the woods. In fact, my kids spent many hours playing out there from morning till night and had many evening bonfires on the quarter acre. I did move away from the property for several years. I had gotten married and moved in with my new husband. My oldest daughter and her family stayed in my home. My husband died soon after our wedding from a small lung cancer, and I was forced to move back home. I'm sorry to hear that. That's a sad, sad time. We built a tiny house for me in the backyard. My daughter moved about, and my brother was living in the big house. My daughter moved about, and my brother was living in the big house. Long story, but my daughter and I were no longer talking, and she was asked to move. Anyhow, after moving back home, I noticed that there was an early eerie feeling about the place just walking from the back door of the tiny house which is about 100 feet i felt like eyes were on me all the time my bedroom in the tiny house was a loft and my dog and i are up there one night watching tv all of a sudden loki jumps up and is looking out the door and growling i told him to lay down and he did but this happened several times and on the have rental time the hella bluck was growling uh must be typos was growling, a loud bang came from my front door, and my door was knocked open. Uh-oh. This is very heavy, solid wood door. I called my brother Rick and told him what just happened, and he came out to look. We saw nothing, but could hear something large moving in the woods away from the property, headed towards the Fort Lewis property. We found something that looked like bear scat outside my house, but didn't even think to look for prints. I covered my windows so he could not see in the, in the very next day. Two nights later, the same thing happened. Loki barking at the door and a loud bang on my door, opening it. Oh, I forgot to mention, the door frame was damaged both times. This time it was split. Again, I called Rick and a friend who was parked my property in her motorhome, and again, all we could do was, some, was hear something moving away in the woods. So needless to say, this really put a fright into me. I don't think it gets much scarier than that, does it? I couldn't understand why this is happening. Why me? Why now? Was it because of the new building on the property and it being lit up at night? I don't know. I had a pet rooster. His name was Joe. Joe slept on the porch in a kennel that was insulated to keep him warm and alight. About a week after the two incidents, with the door around 3 in the morning, I woke to hear Joe screaming for his life and then silence. We went outside to try and find Joe, but couldn't. He was gone. The next morning, we did find a kill site and no Joe. I lived in the big house for a while, but eventually left for Florida where my youngest daughter was stationed in the Navy. I do know that not far from my property on Fort Lewis property in the southeast region, there are rumors of the Army killing a Sasquatch a few years back, and I've heard of them stealing chickens in Tenino. <clears throat> I guess after I moved there, it was also a sighting near Yelm. Tenino, Yelm, Rainier, they are all close together and that's been a lot of sightings around these three small town cities. Well, there's my story. It's no sighting, but what else could it be? We have black bears, but they're small and couldn't have beaten my door in that way. The way it was. Thank you for giving us this podium to tell the stories. So sorry for the loss of Mr. Macaroni. I'd be lost without my dog, their family, Lisa McKenna. Well, thanks, Lisa. I appreciate you taking the time to send that to us. I'm sorry to hear about any grief you might be having with your family. 
No families are perfect anymore. I don't know if they ever will. We're right. But as far as the, the door frame being kicked in, you know, I've had bears on my porch I don't know how many times. And you can hear <coughs> you can hear them loud and clear. <clears throat> my old place used to lay in bed, and the window's right here, and the long covered porch is right there. And it's just be a loud. <gasps> They're very noisy breathers, right? The black bears. And uh, I never, ever, ever had a black bear beating on the door. Never. In our remote cabins up north, black bears never. But one time, we did have a massive grizzly bear. Because <laughs> when, when we leave the cabins in, in, the, in the northern Rockies, the outfitting cabins, we board them up. At times, we'll put plywood with nails sticking up all over the place outside all the windows. Board up the windows, lock the door. And but what we do is we throw mothballs inside the cabin everywhere because the bears can't stand mothballs. But this great big grizzly, I guess, it must have been springtime. Whenever he did it, he just come up to the cabin, probably did a loop around the cabin, went up the front door, and he went Poof, just like that. And he pushed the door and the frame in, just went Poof, on the floor. And his great big muddy paw print was on the door. And I guess as soon as he kicked that door in, he got that big waft of the mothballs and he's like whoa I'm out of here and he didn't trash the cabin and no other bears came and trashed it I guess I'm just mentioning that reminds me of uh, I have witnessed a door frame getting kicked in and that's from probably a thousand pound grizzly bear right but uh, I am 100% certain a grizzly bear didn't push your door in and I am also 100% certain a black bear did not do that either so it's, without a doubt it's the right move to get out of there why those beings a particular one was pissed that you people were living there and not bothering them i don't know i have any clue i don't know what motivates them to do that a friend of mine had one beaten on her house with a rottweiler in there and beating on it high up this two-level house and that thing was beaten on the second level wall and that rottweiler was shitting itself um scampered underneath the bed when normally that dog tries to rip through the door anytime anybody comes on the property. I don't know why they do it. I haven't a clue. It's not very nice, though, is it? <clears throat> All right, well, what do we got? Bible, Nephilim. And dogs. This is for you, Steve. Share only, share only if you want to. Man, if I had a dollar for every email labeled uh, or headed with the Nephilim in the Bible. Hi, Steve. Love your videos and your stories. I've been a hunter fisherman outdoorsman since I was old enough to shoot a daisy BB gun <clears throat> and tie a string and a hook to a stick. My life revolved around what time of year it was, hunting, trapping, fishing season, etc. I did, a little, I did a lot of solo backpacking, wilderness hunting. I don't like hunting and stumbling around others in the outdoors. I'm in my 60s and seen a few things that I didn't make sense. Being one who believes and teaches the Bible, I experienced things which did not seem to fit scriptures. Being one who tries to know as much as possible about the things that I'm interested in, archery, trapping, bird hunting, fishing, and the Bible, etc., always looking for the truth and answers. I've had some strange encounters in my life, including Bigfoot unidentified flying objects, I don't believe in aliens, and demonic demonic spirits. I'm a no-nonsense ty nonsense type of guy, and I don't care what people think. Couldn't care less. The reason I'm emailing you is to not talk about my experiences, but to maybe give my thoughts on a couple of videos where you ask some questions. First, you asked why, if all the answers about these beings were in the Bible, and with all these people were praying, there was so much evil in the world. You spoke that it seems there is a battle between good and evil going on, and you're right. From Genesis to Revelation, the Bible says there will be a conflict until the book of Revelation is fulfilled. Genesis 6 tells how the Nephilims came about. They're a creation of a hybrid between humans and fallen angels, a corruption of God creation. God said all flesh had been corrupted. Because of this corruption, God decided to destroy the earth. The Bible says there were giants in these days and at other times. Don't believe Bigfoot was on the ark. The Bible says Noah was pure in all his generations, no Nephilims in his DNA. Either one of his daughter-in-laws carried the Nephilim DNA, or a Thias inbreeding happened again. This is just a quick overview, there's a lot more to the story. So there is a biblical doorway for the creatures. Dogs. I have hunted lions, 
bears with hounds most of my life and never seen a good pack of dogs for anything. I've seen them fight a lion or a bear, get hurt, but won't stop hunting or fighting. But I've seen dogs and cats absolutely freak out, growl, and refuse to enter a room from time to time where some supernatural events have happened. Animals are aware of the spiritual world, and there are things out there that are not normal or natural or good, and animals can sense it. It's just a quick overview for you, Steve, that might be helpful to get your mind around things like some of the supernatural things they do. I know these things exist. I've seen them and experienced them, without a doubt. I know they're real. Share this if you want. I just want to share these thoughts with you. There's a lot more to the story, but I don't want to be preachy. Just share my views, and later I might share my experiences. Thank you for your open mind and no-nonsense views. Okay, man, thanks for that email. I appreciate it. And again, like I always say, everyone, including myself, I take from these emails and experiences what I will, what I need to help help find those missing pieces to my own puzzles and to your own puzzles for what you need too, right? Okay, what do we got? I'm really on a roll here today, aren't I? Hi Steve, I watched your discourse today on dogs and the hairy bastards and how much they love each other. So I had to send you this one. I sent you a couple of emails previous, one which you read online about the disappearing Sasquatch on Highway 16 east of Prince George and the visible entity strolling by me in the bone-dry poplar leaves while I was hunting moose in the foothills of southwest Calgary. My name is Jim Barkley. You can use it if you want. I'm 68 and have hunted and fished all my life, mainly in southern Alberta, but a few other western provinces as well. Definitely remember your name and your email, man. Thanks for emailing again. This particular incident occurred August 3rd, 2012. It involved intimidation via a god-awful rampaging tantrum, reminding me of an out-of-control four-year-old in the checkout of the supermarket. Mothers love that. So my adult son, son and I were fishing a river, won't give the name, about an hour or so out of southwest Calgary. We had just finished a fish fry lunch and were about ready to pack everything up to the truck. Parked about 60 yards away, suddenly, our Labradoodle, a hell of a smart dog by the way, went into full attack warning mode, barking, growling like crazy, with all four legs spread, hair on his back standing up, ready for action. He's normally very friendly, so we're surprised, but now is about to get real interesting. The dog's reaction to whatever prompted an absolute frenzied outburst of brush smashing about 40 yards away, which lasted to three full minutes, then dead silence for two to three minutes? I'm initially thinking, a grizzly who smelled the fish frying was trying to scare us off. There have been several grizzlies hanging around that general area for years, but I quickly decided that if a grizzly wanted us out, he would just come in and get the job done. No, this is something else, and it was now quietly listening to see what our reaction would be. My next thought was, this indicates some level of intelligence, so not a bear. Per my previous emails, I still knew nothing about Sasquatch despite my previous encounters. It's only after this 2012 experience that I decided searching the internet and found that this is a common Sasquatch tactic. By the way, our dog and our previous dog, a beagle, both alerted me twice on each previous hairy bastard approaches us, approaches, on each hair, previous hairy bastard approaches for a total of four. Man's best friend, man's best friend, you bet, along with horses. Now this series of tantrums, followed by eerie silence, went on for about eight cycles. Although concerned, we had remained fairly calm about the situation, but realizing that we'd both been just about to leave, I said to my son in a normal speaking voice, you know we're done here, anyway, let's just pack up and go. It wasn't until the trip home we discussed the episode that I realized that my statement seemed to put an absolute end to the rampaging, not another sound. And our dog, also, although still quite alert, seemed calmer, but still eager to head for the truck. The riding might have calmed, but screw this, he was ready for home. Well, I now feel pretty confident that I know who that spoiled brat was down in the brush, and that incident, along with the bunch of others, tells me they really don't like us. By the way, if anyone cares, the feeling's mutual. <laughs> Over the years, we've had a series of indicators that tell me they're still there, and they still don't feel the love. I'll never trust them, period. Thanks, Steve, for the shitload of work you put into your roundtable program. The previously doubted have a champion on you, in you. The previously doubted have a champion in you. 
Knowledge of these beasts and their juvenile delinquent antics is invaluable and may even be life-saving one day. Who knows? Thanks again, Steve. P.S. When do we get to see you catching a steelhead? The scenery and the waters are beautiful, but... <laughs> Alright, man. Jim, I appreciate you emailing. And, uh... Make sure you email back with more when you have more. Or if you do have more right now, alright? Then I'll get that shared with everybody. And you're right, they don't like us. On average, they don't like us. You know, like Scott Carpenter said flat out that these things detest us. They cannot stand us. And uh, I recently had a person email me who is having some serious troubles right now with what has recently happened to him. And he is definitely in the academic field, big time. And he is really, really messed up. And he said that this particular thing, when it spun to look at him, he said that its face just went to absolute pure... If you can get a feeling across to somebody by an expression, it was doing it to the max to let him know that he, that it was absolutely anger. It was just filled with anger and hate in his face. The expression had looking at him, staring him down. And he said it was absolutely huge. So yeah, they don't like us. But, again, you know, I'm so beyond, I, I have, I don't have, I have basically almost nearly zero interest in footprints, tree knocks, yowls of the night. I do not give a shit. I want to know what the hell's going on. I can't believe there's an army of people, especially all you people, there's, face it there's tens of thousands of people have these experiences why aren't tens of thousands of people absolutely upset now that they know 100% for sure that we are not being informed honestly or being lied to I don't get it it's just such a bizarre thing for me to witness I don't know how many, how many times I said this on video right it's like man we're going squatching we got some good tree knocks coming back the other night Really? Aren't, aren't you even like half curious to why we're being lied to? You people that are insisting on staying there doing that? Aren't you even like remotely curious to finding out why we're being lied to and what else is going on? Seriously? Why not? Like I'm dead serious. Why not? I'm really, really curious about that. On, with an honest curiosity. I want to know exactly what, why it is that after witnessing these things, that so many people want to stay focused just on those things. And that's it. Put on the full blinders. Ignore the fact that there is much more going on. Absolutely ignore the fact that being we're being lied to and manipulated intentionally. And stay focused on, on just those things. Just the Bigfoot Sasquatch. That's it. I don't understand how so many of you people do that. I don't get it. I really honestly don't get it. You know, I'm looking at that thing, looking at me. <laughs> I guarantee you, I didn't have an ounce of anything in me wanted to start pursuing it and dedicating my entire life to looking for it. My mind went to instantly, whoa, all right, <laughs> we, this shit's real. We're not told about it. We're not taught about it. And people don't want us to know about it. Why not? Right? How many times am I going to babble about that? <laughs> Sometimes it's just really hard not to, you know? The more I see people wasting their time and basically acting dumb, it just frustrates me. So it's like, come on, you guys, get your heads out of your asses. Quit it. Move ahead. Get up, take all that energy you're wasting right there and put it towards finding out the truth about why we're being lied to. Why? <laughs> right? 